Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132 on why optical path length is the critical quantity in our study of interference. So this video will really demonstrate the key fundamental principle for all of Unit 3 for this particular course. Now, this video assumes that you've already watched the videos on some more basics of interference and the video on optical path length. So let's begin with an example. So I've laid a grid on the space so that we can kind of see what's going on. And let's add two light sources, each of which is emitting light coherently. So coming out of the sources, the lights peak together and trough together. Over here, let's add a lens to bring these two incoming parallel light waves to a focal point as we discussed in unit two. Now let's let the light travel. So each light ray has, as shown here, traveled one wavelength. Now two, three, four, five, six. You can see at this point, just before the sixth wavelength completes, that the two waves where they meet have lined up trough to trough which means we're going to have constructive interference at that point. In general, any time two light waves travel the same optical path length, well, they're going to travel the same number of waves, they're always going to line up either peak to peak or trough to trough. So when the optical path lengths are the same, you're going to have constructive interference. Now let's repeat the experiment, but shift the top source of light to the right two wavelengths. Now, each light wave has traveled one wavelength, and let's let it continue traveling. So now the top and bottom have both traveled two wavelengths, and the top wave is going to begin to bend, while the bottom wave, having not yet encountered the lens, will continue to travel straight. Three wavelengths, four wavelengths, now the bottom wave hits the lens and is bent, five wavelengths, six wavelengths. You can see, again, the two waves line up trough to trough. To get to that particular point, the top wave has traveled three and three quarter wavelengths. One, two, three, and then one quarter, two quarter, three quarter. While the bottom wave has traveled five and three quarters. One, two, three, four, five, one quarter, a half, three quarter. So the difference in optical path length is two wavelengths, and we still get constructive interference. Now let's repeat the experiment for a third time, but this time only shift the top source to the right one and a half wavelengths. So one and a half and let's let the light travel. So now one wavelength, two, three, the top wave has begun to bend, but the bottom hasn't gotten there yet, four, five, six. Now you can see at this point, the top wave is on a trough and the bottom wave is on a peak. So they're going to be destructively interfering at this point. The top wave has traveled three and three quarters. One, two, three, one, two, three quarters. And the bottom wave has traveled five and a quarter. So let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five, and a quarter. The peak is the next quarter wave. The difference in optical path length here is therefore one and a half wavelengths. And so we have destructive interference. Let's generalize these results. Anytime the difference in optical path length is an integer, so one, two, minus two, minus three, zero, we get complete constructive interference. The peaks line up with the peaks or the troughs line up with the troughs. Meanwhile, when the difference in optical path length is a half integer, one half, three half, minus five half, etc., 
we get complete destructive interference. A peak will line up with a trough, a trough will line up with a peak. Mathematically, we will call this difference in optical path length the lowercase letter delta, and it's just the difference in the two path lengths. So delta is just L1 minus L2. This is the big idea of all of Unit 3. All we're going to be doing for the rest of the unit in class is comparing optical path lengths to see if the difference in optical path length is an integer or half integer for a variety of different geometries and situations. But I want to stress that this is essentially all we are going to be doing for the entirety of this unit. So you should keep this in mind. Let's do another example. So here we have our two sources, still emitting light coherently, but this time let's look at this little point here. We're going to solve this problem graphically first, and then we'll go mathematically. We're going to use a wavelength of one square. The wave from source one travels one, two, three wavelengths to get to the x. The wave from source two, on the other hand, requires five wavelengths to get to the x. And we can see that the difference, three minus five is minus two, and the two do add up constructively at the x. It's peak to peak. Now let's solve this same problem mathematically. The wavelength is again one. The distance for source one is three. X is equal to three. The wavelength is one. So the optical path length is three. Three over one. For source two, on the other hand, to get the distance x, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, because we can see we have a triangle here with one leg of three and the other leg of four. Three squared plus four squared gives us 25, which means the distance traveled by the light is just the square root of 25, or five units. Since the wavelength is still one, the optical path length will be five. The difference in optical path length, L1 minus L2, will be three minus five, which is minus two, which we know to be an integer, and so that tells us that we're going to get constructive interference. Here's another example without a picture this time. Let's say we have some sort of system with two light rays, each with a wavelength of 700 nanometers. One ray travels 5,250 nanometers, the other travels 9,100 nanometers. What happens when the two rays are brought together? I want to stress it doesn't matter which light ray I call source one and which light ray I call source two. All we care about is, is the difference in optical path length an integer or a half integer. Flipping the order and calling, you know, the 5,251 versus 5, calling the 5,250 source 2 will just change the sign. We don't care really what the value of the difference in optical path length is. We don't care if it's 2, 3, 4, and moreover, we don't care about the sign. We don't care if it's minus 3 or 3. We just care as if, if it's an integer or a half integer. So I'm free to call on whichever one I want source one and whichever one I want source two. So I'm gonna call the light ray that travels 5,250 nanometers source one. For this particular light ray, the distance is 5,250 nanometers, the wavelength is 700 nanometers, which gives us an optical path length of seven and a half. So the first ray travels seven and a half wavelengths to get from the source to the point where the two rays are brought together. Note, as long as the units for x and lambda match, I can use whatever units I want. This is one of the few cases where I don't have to convert everything to meters first. As long as the distances are the same, it's all right. Our goal is to get the optical path length to be unitless. Now, if the 5,250 is source one, that makes the other one source two. So what's the optical path length for this light ray? Well, the 9,100 nanometers the ray traveled divided by 700 nanometer wavelength gives us 13, which means the difference in optical path length will be seven and a half minus 13 or minus five and a half. And so we can tell just from this text that at the point where the two rays are brought together, we will have destructive interference. 
And I want to stress again, this is all we will be doing in this entire unit. This particular calculation with a variety of different configurations of light sources and mirrors and so forth. So in summary, the key quantity for the study of interference is the difference in optical path length, delta equals L1 minus L2. If this delta is an integer, you can know that you will have complete constructive interference. If this delta is a half integer, you know that you will have complete destructive interference. Again, you don't care what value delta takes, you don't care what the sign of delta is. All that matters is integer or half integer. What if I get one and a quarter, you say? Well, if you get something that's neither an integer nor a half integer, then it's neither complete constructive nor complete destructive interference. It's something in between, some sort of partial cancellation. This concludes this video.